Hello and welcome to Failure and Analysis. My name is Kevin Jordan, a former uh, one of the original three game designers for World of Warcraft back in the vanilla days. And we're here to watch an interview between Sloot and Ian Watcher Hazacostas about Shadowlands. So let's let's give it a watch. Hope you enjoy. Stay a while. I've known each other for a long time. First of all, thanks a lot for uh, hanging out today. I know things are, must be crazy all over the place right now with Alpha launching. Hope you guys are staying safe over there with all the craziness in the world. Um, so Indeed. let's yeah, get... It's been, it's been a fun week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been... It's honestly like... It, it's obviously... All this is surreal. Um, you know, at this point, the team is fully transitioned to working from home. And, you know, there's a lot of logistical challenges in deploying, fixing an alpha from, you know, the comforts of our own offices and bedrooms. But... It's awesome to see people starting to jump in, and we're really excited for the weeks and months to come. So far, so good. Um, well, I mean, the launch has been smooth so far. Let's uh, let's get down to the uh, nitty gritty because I know there's some things you want to talk about as well, which we'll probably cover here. So, obviously, now that the alpha is live, we started the great data mining and unpruning that we were, you know, we've been talked about uh, for so long. Uh, of everything we've seen, is this kind of a final list of the things we're getting, or can we expect that more things are going to be unpruned or, you know, welcomed back into rotation? Any new talent reworks? Because some classes were a bit skimpy. You know, we keep kind of memeing and joking about Feral, but truthfully, some guys didn't get looked at too much yet. Yeah, I mean, some, some blood talent changes in there. But yeah, I think, so there isn't some giant, drop of additional content and changes that we have planned that you're not seeing yet. But obviously that does not mean that what you see today is what's going to go live when this comes out. Um, I think in terms of big revamps, big changes, we've tried to get those in early so we can start getting feedback and getting that conversation. Um, as classes take a look, specs take a look at things that have returned, things that have changed, that's going to be in a process where they let us know, hey, it's awesome that, you, that we got X and Y back, but we really miss Z. Can you guys hook that up? And quite possibly we can. In other cases, we'll have gone too far. Uh, but that's going to be the product of this dialogue with the community, driven by feedback. There is This isn't a case where, all right, we have you know half of them done and the others are going to come in later. We've done that at times in past expansion alphas and betas. And iteration is important. Feedback is important. Right? We've very rightfully gotten raked over the coals for this when some changes, big changes to a class or spec get dropped late in data without a lot of time to really iterate on them, then we end up having to fix them in patches after the expansion block. So this is a this is always a tricky thing. And one of the things I, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, right off the bat is the, the process by which they do things. Um, they put out some feelers and then they, they look to the community to respond. Is this enough? Is this too much? And then they they consider changes based on that. And that's that is an important part of the process, but I wish I had more confidence that they had more confidence in their design work, right? I feel like, and this could just be lip service, right? It could just be they don't purely pay attention to the community at all, which, um, yeah, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not sure would be a good thing or not. The community can lead you astray very easily, right? And here's the general problem with feedback is you put a thing out, right? Let's say they did great stuff with Shaman and they did terrible stuff with Shadow Priest for whatever, for whatever reason. Um, then the only people that are ever gonna talk are the, the Shadow Priests, right? Like that's who you're gonna hear from. You're not gonna hear from all the people that are happy with what's going on. And so you can get this weird sense of you know, placation or responsiveness that encourages game design where you sh somebody should have been paying attention to the shaman because the shaman is now busted, right? The shaman, they did too good or they were too crowd pleasing with the changes and not didn't have a good sense of the design ramifications of making shamans or putting shamans back in that place that they're in, right? Um, so it can direct your attention to the wrong place <clears throat> based on if you're just watching feedback or expecting feedback from the community to be too big a part of the process. So that's what I worry about sometimes. Uh, it could be fine. Like generally speaking from back in my day, um, you know, back in my day, <laughs> um, 
in general, the community knew a lot less about game design, right? Than people do today. They're much more informed. They're much closer to the process. And so there's a lot of, um, it's sort of the armchair quarterbacking has gotten better in one sense in that they, they can use the language, they understand the principles a little better. But what hasn't gotten better is the, the game design sensibilities of, um, I, I'm not just here to please myself, right? I'm not here to please my character class my, the, my particular experience that I want to be amazing, whether it's raiding or arenas or whatever it is, right? Um, that hasn't gotten better. We're all still very selfish when it comes to what we want, right? And so, and that's the difference between a game designer and a game player. Game players, especially ones that devote their life to playing, right? Like Twitch streamers or, you know, pro arena players or, you know, uh, bleeding edge raiders, you know, um, those guys are all very interested in one thing, right? And that's excelling in what they need to excel at. So they're going to bitch and moan about all the things that they need to make their lives better. And they don't care about the broader experience. So, and they're going to be the loudest, right? So, um, that process can be damaging from the start. So you have to be really careful and, at the end of the day, like you want the designers that are working on this stuff to be professional, to know what they're doing, to be able to recognize agenda based feedback, right? And when to listen and when not to, right? You want to have some confidence in that process. And that's one of the things I, over the years, I've worried about, right? But then having said that, I can't see inside the process, right? Because I'm not there. So, they might do be doing a lot of this and they might be discarding a lot of this stuff. But uh, I know in the past people have been pretty uh, unhappy about things, but, um, you know, the sign, uh, the, the community being unhappy about a specific element is sometimes the perfect thing, right? It's sometimes an indicator that you've tweaked it just right is that they kind of didn't get their way. So they're throwing a little tantrum because their character class isn't, isn't overpowered this expansion right when they've been screaming and shouting trying to get you know get you to change things that make them overpowered so sometimes that's a good thing right anyway let's keep watching you want to get things out there up front so we can start the conversation okay um and i guess kind of in the same vein are there any plans to i know we kind of welcomed um uh, you know, Windwalker and and Frost DK back to the realm of dual wield and two handing. Any plans to extend that further to Fury and enhance it all, or is that kind of set in stone? A few things are set in stone. Um, I think we've we've actually we've obviously heard a lot of feedback from Fury Warriors right away that they miss single minded Fury. Some of that's as much about the aesthetic feel as it is about any mechanical hook. That's something the teams talking about. We have a couple of problems that we need to work through to make that a reality, but. We're actively discussing it, and that may well be something that does come to an alpha build in your immediate future. Okay. Uh, Two-handed hands is a little trickier. I think that's like, that was functionally, like that was basically dead as a Wrath, I think, when Lava Lash got added, and it wasn't the right way to play, even through Burning Crusade. So like, I deeply empathize and feel the, the nostalgia of like, basically running up to someone in Warsong and killing them instantly with a Wind Fury proc, big two-hander, but that's like, 13, 14 years removed at this point. There's a lot of itemization challenges as well as just a couple of core abilities built around dual wielding. That feels much less likely. Fair enough. Um, all right, so amongst reading all the wonderful class changes, uh, there's been some... Why, why is it every time I look at Slude, it sounds like... He has this expression on his face like he's not listening at he, to Ian at all. <laughs> he just has this list of questions that he's going through. He's playing with his cat. And he's talking to other people off his camera. <laughs> it's so funny. Something that has caused a surge in people picking up their pitchforks recently, and that is, of course, the uh, AOE cap on combat, which oh is boy. obviously a very hot topic right now. So, majority of uh, spells have been either limited to five or maybe even up to eight AOE uh, targets, and some of them are diminishing, you know, damage outside of their primary mm -hmm. target. So, right. So, this is a classic example, right? And someone actually brought it up in chat as I was reading. Um, this is a classic example. 
uh, a lot of the retail player base wants to continue going through content at the rate they're going. The fastest way to go through content, at least from what I've heard, I could be wrong out of play, is, is AOEing everything down. That was always the fastest way. Um, we had we had mitigation and um, we mitigated that with uh, threat back in the day. Like mages couldn't just AOE burst everything down because they'd pull the targets and they'd die instantly. And so you had to you had to slow it down by letting the warrior get enough threat on everything, and then he could AOE everything down. And so it slowed things down a bit. Threat has you know had its struggles in the past several um, you know expansions. And also more of the classes have have uh, brought been given AOE tools so that they can be like all the other classes as part of the homogenization problem. And that's damaged the distinctiveness of classes that could AOE. There were very few classes that could AOE as like the masters of AOE back in the day. Like the rogue was terrible at it. Warriors had target limits uh, with cleave, etc. So... Um, if you wanted AOE, you had to bring certain classes. That was one of their specialties. But players care less about the distinctiveness of the different classes than they do about the rate at which they blow through content, right? So they don't want anything that's going to damage the rate at which they plow through stuff to get loot. And they don't care, again, about distinctiveness. So this is what they're reacting to. And as a game designer, you have to, um, you have to recognize that distinctiveness is important, uh, that people are gonna want special things about the character class that they play so that they know they're bringing this special thing that other people are excited about having them and they feel wanted. Um, and that that's more important than how fast people are going through the content. What's the thought process? Why a lot of people feel this is an unwelcome change and maybe we can shed a bit of insight on why? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so uh, this was framed as, you know, AoE spells capped or majority of AoE spells capped. I, I, I'm not sure that's exactly accurate. What the change is aiming to do is to actually restore some niches of strengths that used to exist that don't anymore. You know, I think back in the day, and actually not that long ago, there was the concept of cleave as distinct from AoE. A lot of melee specialists were fantastic at cleave. And they would shine when you had, you know, four or five targets, you're tanking some ads on a boss, and they'd be the ones who you wanted to bring, who would dominate that situation. Then you have pure AoE, you know, the Rain of Fire, Arcane Explosion, etc. If you look at those, those don't have any target caps on them. I think looking back when we removed those caps, it was with an eye towards simplification. Actually, like I think around the time of Legion, we were doing a lot of looking at our tooltips, trying to clean things up. And... <laughs> uh that's a that's an interesting answer um i liked where he was going he was recognizing the distinctiveness but then using the word simplification is a pr move instead of homogenization right which is really what people felt they were doing um and it's also weird for them to bring up the complexity of tooltips because I've seen a lot of the tooltips of a lot of their abilities be just complex as hell. And that's that's to make it so the scaling of every ability is on the same exact path, right? Whereas back in the day, we would sacrifice some abilities to poor scaling so that the tooltips wouldn't be these crazy, weird mathematical monstrosities, right? Um, so it's interesting for him to say, yeah, we were trying to, and, and that could be like, he said Legion. So maybe it was a reaction to mop or, you know, warlords or something like that, where they had gotten a little bit out of control, but it's certainly not less. The tooltips are, I don't think are less confusing than, or more simplified than say classic. Yeah, tooltips were long, so we made the game dumber. That's right. <laughs> oh, I know, Mad Butter. So let's let him finish. Obviously, you know, going from hitting a max of four or five targets or three with your Blade Flurry or, or Whirlwind or whatever else to hitting infinite is, is an improvement. But what we actually did was 
destroy that separation that was actually important to class diversity and balance to who you want to bring for different situations. We've also found that, you know, as we've seen not just in high-end Mythic Plus, but in raids and even solo content, like Horrific Visions recently and internal Torghast playtests, uh, the right answer, if you could get away with it, was always just round up everything, pop your cooldowns, AOE them down, right? For Horrific Visions, half of what you do is train through a whole area, go into a building, go around a corner, LOS them, blow them all up. And that, that's super fun and a cool solution to a problem, but it shouldn't be the solution to every problem. And a lot of the creature design that we were going down the road of pursuing was trying to find ways of stopping you from doing that. That's, you know, put obnoxious abilities like stun and knockbacks and teleports or whatever else on them. And again, that, that's we're, we were getting into this tug of war with our players around that. So the goal is not to kill big pulls forever. I think it's more to create a situation where there are more unique strengths and we're moving away from homogenization where everyone's AOE buttons can all hit a dozen targets, 20 targets. And then it's just a question of, well, can you do yours while moving? Is yours bursty? Which one does more damage? Okay, that's the best. So do you have any... Con Great answer. Right. So I, I truly hope that is the goal and they can execute on that. Um, and he did use the term homogenization there, so good on him to call it what it is, because uh, he called it simplification before. So yeah, very good. And I like that. That's that's that harkens back to the original design of uh, people have different tools, and the way you approach clearing stuff uh, has different strategies. It requires you to implement a strategic set of decisions before you go through, whether it's with um, using crowd control and burning one down at a time because you're heavy on crowd control and lower on AE or because you have the type of tank that's good at AOE threat and can be supported by AOE damage or not you know like there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces that fit into making a group and you have to adjust your st strategy based on what your group composition is and that's really good um, now the downside of that is people get apply stigma right and stigma can cause like groups to take extra long to form right now this is this was true back in classic where you had to you know talk it over uh, nowadays you just get shoved together right which leads people to quitting the group instantly to go find another one because they didn't get the comp they want um, which complicates the process but uh, these are all this is all part of the um, the social experience that ha also has to be designed, also has to be looked at. And um, the answer is never homogenization, right? Um, and I think that's one of the mistakes that has been made over the years is that, well, everyone's complaining they're not getting the comps they want, so let's make every class sort of do the same thing so that every group sort of works no matter what. Because people have determined that... Um, AOE is the only way, right, to effectively blow through dungeons, you know, or whatever it happens to be. You have to have, you know, the mage cleave problem of classic. Um, so, yeah, that stuff has to be massaged. Concern over how this might affect, you know, some high-end dungeon runners, things like MDI, you know, people that kind of want to crank bigger pulls in, in dungeons or even raid encounters that have ads spawning on the side do you think that's gonna have a negative effect on it or are you guys now kind of designing with that aspect in mind i think we certainly would be designing with it in mind it'll have an effect and i, I there's no like i get that pulling 20 things and blowing them up it's visceral and it's fun we don't want to destroy those moments entirely but it's also a relatively new and frankly somewhat degenerate play style that's become the universal answer to all these questions. Like going back and looking at challenge modes back in, you know, in, in Mists, Warlords, in Mists, a lot of it was actually driven by tank vengeance, a whole separate issue. But there have been a lot of examples of aggressive speed runs, risky plays that weren't, but live like the stuff that you see today where it's literally just always round up everything, blow it up. Um, is it going to change things? Yes, it will. But I'm confident that players are going to adapt. And I think we think we can also add more depth rather than, again, having these, this one solution be the right answer to every puzzle that we present you with in creating our content. Okay. 
Yeah, that is pretty funny, him calling it degenerate. And he's right to an extent. It's degenerate when it, it becomes the universal answer, like he said. Uh, it's not degenerate when that's your class's thing. That's your particular group's strategic makeup is AOE threat and AOE damage, right? Then that's cool. And it's fun to be in those groups for that time, that particular run. It's also fun to do the, you know, carefully polymorph and burn things down one at a time mode. It's it's very technical and it's um, it can be very compelling. So um, I think it only becomes degenerate when that's what you're doing all the time. But forcing players in, to make more interesting decisions because the strategies are more diverse and deeper is uh, is just better overall, I think. Does it make a mockery of the game's design? Well, that, yeah, I mean, that's a that's a loaded question. You could say that it's making a mockery because it's the best way to, the most efficient way to do it, and everyone can do it. But that's the game design, right? They've allowed, they've put themselves in that corner of everyone can do AOE, you know, pulls and farming. Doesn't matter what class you have. So to say it's a mockery of the game design is, is kind of backwards, right? Because they've they should know that that's the environment they created and that's what the players are going to do. So um, it's only a mockery of the game design when it's, to me, when it's like it's using exploits or whatever it is. So. <clears throat> I guess that's just the general concern is that it's uh, some people feel it's unnecessarily slowing down gameplay. Kind of tied to this, another hot topic that is actually a continued hot topic, but is now resurging, of course, because new expansion, a ton of new abilities are coming back. The topic of the GCD cleanse. Um, are there any plans to, well, I mean, first of all, either completely, you know, undo it from BFA or maybe look at more abilities that we're going to be taking off the GCD, or is it just that's kind of it, like nothing's changing? Which are some of the ones that, you know, having played with it now for a couple of years, what are the ones that bother you most? Like, Me what? personally, or from what I yeah. see? I mean, I, you know, both. I, I, you know, it seems that anything in the realm of like 60 seconds or less or 45 seconds or less seem to be offensive. So like, uh, you know, DK grip, uh, self healing on a paladin, frenzied regen on a, um, on a, on a guardian, a uh, seraphim in, intimidating shout on a, uh, not intimidating shout, a uh, demoralizing shout on a, on a <laughs> warrior, fiery brand, you know, things like these, uh, seem to be especially throughout the expansion they've caused a lot of moments of frustration where you've done your skill skillful input as a player you've reacted appropriately you're saying hey i gotta heal myself as a tank i'm about to die and the game has locked you out of doing that and then you end up dying or not being able to what should have skillfully and reactfully as a player you know been mm -hmm. done to save you you can't do that because you had to do something else or you were locked mid mid time i mean it's in so Okay, so I think taking a step back, those individual examples are still the sort of things that are great to give feedback on, and the team as a whole is definitely flexible in you know, pulling back and, and reevaluating philosophies with regard to specific abilities. I think the, the aim of the broader change is still actually the elements of skill that do exist in making those decisions in a bit of anticipation in the choice of do you want to do A or B, not just we'll hit them both, they're both going to happen. Um, as you know, obviously, as someone who's played a wide range of tanks and is kind of an expert at all the different tank specs that are out there, something like Death Strike and their self-healing as Death Knights, that's very much about managing GCD, and that's always been fine for them. You know, signature defensive abilities like Bubble or whatever have always been on the G GCD and work. Now, that's not the answer for everything, and there are places where having something off the GCD can be a classes or a specs advantage, but it's something we want to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's kind of what led us to where we are, but we're still talking about listening to concerns with specific abilities. Yeah, but I mean, like the concern is more the question of, I understand what you're saying. Oh, my health's low. Should I, you know, shield of the righteous again or should I self heal? But the issue is, you know, especially as you do higher levels of content, you reach a time when your health just spikes in the blink of an eye and you're actually in the middle of a GCD and you've made the reactive mm -hmm. decision to self heal and you can't. So it's not. It's not that, hmm, what should my next choice be is, yeah. I want to make this choice emergency right now, and I can't. Yes, this is an interesting one. Um, and someone was talking about it in chat earlier. The, the, the gravitation towards the action RPG play style, right? Like, 
the AOEing everything down, you know, filling the screen with damage and everything falls over. That's a very action RPG play style. It's also an MMO play style, but it's it's a longer process, right? Like back in the day, you didn't push two buttons, fill the screen with damage, and most things except the tougher mobs died, right? It was still, you had to, you know, arcane explosion a good portion of your mana bar out, you know, before everything was dead. And then everybody sat and drank, right? Ate and drank. Um, and the game has moved a lot closer to um, action RPG over the years. Everything's faster, kill times are faster, combat times are faster. Um, and you'll notice also with action RPGs, the way they threaten players is near instant death, right? You make one or two mistakes at the high end and you're killed instantly. And that's what happens when you get your combat times really low, right? When you have 20 seconds to finish a combat or like in a raid fight, um, five minutes, let's say, then there's a there are trends right it's like there's moments where the warrior's health is low and you have to burn cooldowns to get it back up um or do something special add an extra heal or whatever it is um it's not just did he miss and he blows up right did he miss his evasion and he blows up so um the, the whole concept of gcds is under pressure because the playstyle has gone more everything's super deadlier because the combat times are much lower um, if the combat times were much higher and these things it would become more strategic right i'm gonna have to push myself heal in the next three gcds or i'm gonna die but you have those windows of opportunity but if it, everything's killing you instantly um, then the gcd is becoming an impediment right um, and it's also the difference between certain classes or play style, right? Um, rogues are designed to be jamming their GCD all the time. It's a short GCD at one second, or at least it was. And it, it was always meant to be pumping out damage, right? You have vanish and things like that, but... Uh, generally speaking, you're supposed to aggressively be using your GCDs. The Paladin, on the, up, on the other hand, was designed to not be jamming his his buttons at every GCD, to have free GCDs to react to things, right? To heal, to buff, to bubble, whatever it is. And so that's also part of the class design. And a lot of the classes have been, again, homogenized towards always be jamming buttons, right? let no GCD sit there waiting, right? And that's a bad combination when you talk about being instantly killed or killed within a GCD. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting trend that you've seen in WoW, and I'm not surprised people are complaining about it. But again, I don't think the answer is getting rid of the GCD and making it even more like an action RPG. Fair, right? I mean, I guess I, I'd be, how does that differ from that same experience with death striking on a death knight, though? Um, well, they have more frequent access to CDs that save their lives, right? They have frequent access to vamp blood. I mean, they're just built for quick, short CDs that can save them. Yeah, but, I mean, and but those situations still occur. I think it, it's that is the sort of thing that we're open to discussing, right? If a specific <laughs> specs toolkit doesn't give them the range of tools and they end up in that frustrating situation where they're getting bursted down faster than they can react, then there's a case for evaluating that for sure. Okay. Um, the other question is what what is the type of content? What are the situations that people are getting into that are putting them there? And that, that also may be something we're doing wrong on the encounter design side. I think if, if we're killing you from you know full or near full to dead before you can react in the span of a GCD without the feeling of you know you missed an interrupt or did something that had counterplay then we're screwing up on that front, regardless of whether your ability was on or off GCD. Because we also don't necessarily want skill and WoW to be about just Twitch reaction time. And within this you know, 0.6 second window, can you hit the button before you die? Right. That's yeah, that's a good point too. Uh, they don't want it to get there, but some of their systems 
allow for that sort of scaling difficulty like the mythic plus stuff is tuned to sort of scale i don't know how far it goes um but they're they're trying to give challenging content to the very best players in the game forever right and so there is a mathematical point where they have to kill players instantly <laughs> which causes them to be perfect so um throughout the experience and that it becomes really tight and if you're playing at that level your experience is totally different than everyone else's right like you're talking about a very small you know fraction of percentage of players that are playing at this really high level um that uh the game has just changed and it's not that way for a lot of the people playing you know you know anywhere below them so uh, the expectations of those that group of people is usually very specific and typically shouldn't be catered to so it's a weird one but again they're very vocal so seems unlikely the game is going to get slower now or in the future I agree with that yeah again more of the painted themselves into a corner it's much harder to slow the game down now that they've gotten it this fast just not what wow it has been about at its core it's about the moment-to-moment -moment decision making you know metered out every second second and a half of multitasking paying attention to different priorities and figuring out what you're going to do next a second yeah, okay, that's fair. So uh, if you remember, that was that kind of gray zone that you and I talked about in that 8.2 summit. So I guess it's kind of the same deal right now. You guys are just going to evaluate on a basis-by-basis -basis situation and then see what happens as the alpha and beta goes on. Pretty um, much. And I think specific examples are the most helpful there. Um, you know, the broad feedback of, all right, revert the GCD changes. But we, we understand that. We've processed that. But specific examples of, okay, these actually feel okay, but this one feels particularly crappy. That's the kind of thing that we'd love to hear and act. Okay. Um, let's move to a kind of like quick fire section. So I'm just going to, you know, be like, hey, you guys doing this? What are you doing about this? Feel free to just answer in a sentence or two. Or if you want to kind of, you know, do the, uh, the E and expansion on it and you want to <laughs> add to it, go sure. ahead. Um, Master Looter, coming back or no? Uh, no plans to bring it back right now. I think we're looking at improving personal loot, improving agency control over how that plays out, but that's the path we've committed to, the path we're going down. Uh, mission table style thing coming back? Uh, yes, we are planning to have one. They're called Adventures as part of the Sanctum System Covenants. Uh, I think you know we, we feel like we don't ever want to go back to a place where, like in Warlords, it was an incredibly central part of your gameplay, but there is value as you know a sink for some resources that you earn the thing you can do on your phone, a little bit of you know, a loop that, that exists there. But we are actually looking to evolve the gameplay beyond the you know match matching counters and hope you get good RNG on your you know 130% chance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a bit more involved mini game this time around. We're looking forward to rolling that out a bit later. Okay. Um, gear swapping in dungeons in, in Mythic Plus specifically. Uh, st <laughs> no, it, it's. No current plans to change it. It's something that we'll continue to discuss. I think it that comes down to probably a topic we'll we'll touch on later in the context of covenant powers and choices. You know, a lot of RPG customization comes down to having strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> well put, Lady Storyteller. Ah, uh, the egg timers return. Yeah. The phone integration. I don't know. I'm such an old man. Is that what you guys want? Is that really? It's serving a market, right? It's it's serving some market. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of no. Don't you have phones? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you still use no flip phone. Nicely done. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, but it's just it's not. What's what's in, what's interesting is, like, uh, yeah, control delete. Um, you just threw out this idea that 
you know, phone as a secondary type of experience that is supplementing in some way the experience of the rest of a group is, is an interesting thought. We'll see what they mean by evolving the gameplay. But yeah, devoting resources to, again, like the worst kind, the worst level of content, which, you know, the mission table, daily quests, you know, things like that that are all automatically generated and are just kind of these background tasks. Um, especially when they're so behind, you know, is questionable to me. But uh, they must feel like there's a ton of value by some metric I don't understand or don't care about. But uh, yeah, it's hard to be, I don't have all the information there. Sunk cost, yeah, possibly. But it's so funny because they abandon things wholesale sometimes, right? Like garrisons, um, and yet they'll 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 fight tooth and nail to keep things like Titan Forging well past its you know shelf life. So um, it's it's really interesting. And again, I'm not inside, so I don't have all the all the information to understand because sometimes it's an architecture problem right like we've committed down this path with our architecture and to back out of it it would be really difficult so i don't know but um yeah i, I do find some of their decision making on what they pursue and just decide to evolve and blossom into the dream thing is is definitely interesting and you're going to pick picking a load out of here that balances those for the dungeon as a whole, what you're trying to accomplish in the dungeon as a whole lets you make some more interesting and nuanced choices versus, all right, you're going to have these trinkets, this gear for big trash pulls. You're going to have this other set of gear that you use for single target on bosses. And it's now about just collecting a bunch of sets of stuff, macroing them together, and not really making nuanced decisions, just leaning into strengths and only having those. Okay. Um, th well, that's a big... That's a big job. That's a tough one. I'm curious how they're gonna how they're gonna manage that. Cause yeah, like he, he did he sort of inferred that changing your loadouts per, between fights in a dungeon is too much, right? And you need all these program support, you know, to wardrobe or whatever it is that the mod is, um, to constantly be switching out. And it's the same philosophy as specs, right? Like, oh, switch to your AOE spec for this pull. Switch to your single target spec for this pull, right? Um, it's too much. You don't want people to have to make those kind of decisions constantly. You want them to make it on a per run basis, like the loadout type, um, or even per evening, right? Um, like we're gonna PVE tonight, so I'm gonna be PVE spec, and then tomorrow night we're gonna PVP. So I'll be PvP spec. So there, there is a, there is a cadence there that I think is, um, more interesting. And he, he seemed to be suggesting that it was going to be a dungeon by dungeon. Um, and I guess the modern flow is you run a, a, a dungeon a bunch of times, and then you do a different dungeon a bunch of times. <laughs> I could be wrong, but and obviously different play styles for different people, but. Uh, that is a tough problem to solve for sure is trying to come up with a cadence that suits everybody in in a in a pleasing way um and then how much gear that requires right like how many different types of things like to me it, it would probably come down to slots right like you change your trinkets out but you don't train change or maybe your weapon out but you don't change um, every piece of your gear out, right? Uh, and you rarely change your your talent spec. I think it would be another one if I you know could have my way, because again that promotes this identity, this sense of identity. I'm this special snowflake that does these special things, and that's part of who I am and part of the playstyle I like. And I'm not switching it constantly or expected to switch constantly by everyone else in my group. So, uh, yeah, finding a finding the right mix and match or the right balance on that is a really, really tricky problem. 
this one, yeah, I, I think you'll probably want to talk a bit more on. Maybe, I don't know. It depends what you have. But uh, tier sets, do you think they were successful to be removed in BFA? And will they be coming back in any shape or form in this expansion? Uh, Magic 8-Ball says quite possibly. Um, we don't have tier sets in the initial like 9.0 Shadowlands patch. It's something our, our team wants to do again. It's something we're talking about seeing return later on in the expansion. Okay. Uh, so a couple challenges we have to work through to figure out you know, exactly how we translate those into the modern era. I think one, one of the reasons that made us pull back from them by the time of Legion was looking at just what they turned into. Well, originally, when they were first rolled out, like back in 2004, it was this long-term chase goal. Raid for months, finally cobbled together this awesome looking set that also had bonuses. Whereas with multiple difficulties, with increased rate of just loot acquisition in general, as you know, it was like you kind of, especially at high end, you expected to have your four piece bonus from the new tier like three weeks in, if that, if not sooner. And then any other gear that you got from other systems like Mythic Plus, those were almost dead slots. You're never going to break up a set bonus just to, you know, get a non set BP. So we don't love that aspect of it, but the art, the class fantasy, the sense of, you know, class differentiation, and also some aspects of the set bonuses as a goal to strive for are all things we want to recapture. I thought they moved away from it because artists were tired of making sets that all looked the same. Isn't that the excuse they gave? I had a feeling it was a design issue all along. <clears throat> It's nice to see him, you know, talk about the design issue <laughs> and not to paint the artists as tired, exhausted, you know, like, ah, oh, just I'm so sick of working here on this game. It's just Jesus Christ. Do I really have to do another set? <laughs> it's like, OK, move that guy to a different project. Get somebody in here who's hungry to put his art stamp on the world. But yeah, I, I just I never believed it. Right. Like I always just. It's like artists are always loving to do new creative stuff, you know, like you can get exhausted. I can understand that eventually. But uh, generally speaking, yeah, it always just sounded like a game design issue. And they were trying to pawn it off on the artists, which is pretty bad. Cool. Um, this is probably the last one of the quick fire. Uh, I, I don't know if you even have a short answer for this, but the past two expansions have been plagued with issues at times i mean most recent one of course being the drama of uh, account wide essences but alt unfriendliness and there were some mentions at blizzcon as to you know striving for a more permanent alt friendliness structure moving to shadowlands so any any details to share on that that's a quick fire question I, I said um, it's the last of them it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a continuum back into the world of not quick fire <laughs> okay okay um so yeah it, Yes, this is something that we've tried to make a focus of Shadowlands, and then we talked about a BlizzCon. I missed an opportunity. You should have just said yes or whatever, you know, <laughs> like some binary answer. Zero. <laughs> I think when it comes to alt friendliness, that can mean different things to different players. You know, for some folks, they're looking for variety of experience. They're looking for ways to see the game from a different perspective, and something like legion class campaigns were fantastic for that or you know the different covenant arcs that we're going to have in shadowlands can let you experience new parts of the game but for other people when they talk about alt friendliness they're like hey my raid leader is requiring three raid ready alts how much annoying stuff do i have to do to get those ready and that's a, a different side of the equation um i think on all fronts shadowlands should be better uh, a mix of that is you know, the freeform sandbox format for leveling successive characters where you can join your covenant right away, tackle the zones and the quests or any content, whatever order you like. Uh, but also the fact that we don't have an AP this expansion. We don't have some you know, long tail frankly grind that you can feel like you should always be doing on your main. So that's been one of the other things that's driven feelings of alt unfriendliness. It's not even that you know catching up on an alt is so hard. It's that you feel like you always have more that you could be doing and thus should be doing on your main. So you can never justify to yourself playing an alt or you feel like you're sacrificing your main's progression to play an alt. Shadowlands. That's a good answer. I like that. Um, let people finish, right? Again, it's like there's, uh, there's always been this weird philosophy that you have to 
you have to capture people's attention at all times. Let people finish, you know, get best in slot, right? Finish that slot. Let people finish the raids, get all the gear they want out of a raid, get complete all of the content, you know, with a character if they're no lifing it, right? And then, then they can play alts, they can play other games, they can do weird things, they can socialize, they can play dress up and, you know, or dress down and Lions Pride in. Um, whatever it is, so like give them, give them an opportunity to stop chasing that grind, right? Um, because they, they won't stop. I mean, some people are just that way, you know, they're, they have addictive personalities, you know, and they're going to keep doing it. So you, sometimes you have to step in and give them an end point, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and then they'll be excited to come back for the next thing, right? they leave happy if they leave content if they can feel like yeah i did it i did everything there was to do with my character um you know part of them will bitch right if they have trouble playing other games they'll be like there's not enough content the game is lame but uh i think uh i think a lot of people will just be like yeah i did it now i'm gonna do it again with another character or i'm gonna that was always a thing. How many 60s do you have? How many 70s, right? That was always a thing. Um, and that was for people that were, you know, completing the content because they were no lifing it. So yeah, let them do it. Should be significantly all friendly right now. Oh, that's good news. Um, so back to the world of not quick fire. So you don't, so you don't call me out again in front of so many people again. Um, I'm sorry. No. Uh, so kind of a, a general question, which will lead into, uh, I, you'll, you'll get an idea, obviously, if we're at least because it's a hot topic. But um, in BFA specifically, and, you know, it kind of happens every expansion. I've been around a long time as well. But in BFA specifically, there was a lot of clamor on social media that people felt like their feedback during beta especially wasn't listened to. Uh, feedback about essences wasn't listened to. And then ultimately a lot of things changed about Azerite and people were like, ah, I told you. And then essences ultimately went to count wide and they're like, why didn't they do this months ago and all this kind of stuff. So there's a general notion oftentimes that feedback is, I know you guys don't outright ever ignore it, of course, but it does feel like some people's opinions are not really taken into account a lot, especially when feedback starts early. It seems that there's a lot of, you know, unanimous voting. And Here we go. Some people's opinions aren't taken. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> there's all these opinions coming in some are taken some aren't you can't take them all <laughs> nor should you take them all or you know as a game designer you got to pick and choose right i'm not sure where he's going with this question but it makes me giggle a little bit and what should be more about the experience and getting bas gear for your character uh, I think the answer is that it should be both, right? Like it should appeal to both types of players. You're absolutely right, Captain Spock, in that the game hasn't appealed to the other kind of player enough, right? The one that's just out for the experience. Um, or at least... So so here, here's the thing it's done. Like, the experience they've cared about is like the Mythic Plus hardcore guys that are chasing BIS gear, Right? That's the that's the experience. That's the character whose experience or player that whose experience they care about the most. Where so they're putting a lot of their eggs in that basket rather than here's a bunch of stuff to chase. The experience is good for that person, and it's also good for the people that just want to run around, explore the world, and socialize and have a good time and aren't worried about being max level and having the best gear. Right. So they haven't put enough effort into that group for a long, long time. <clears throat> decision and and feeling from people that this should change about either this class and spec or this system or whatever so are you guys approaching that differently in any way did you guys feel that from your side that maybe you could do a better job or is that just kind of the way it, it goes uh we can absolutely do a better job and I, I think i would say that the way that essences worked in 8.2 and rise of bashara are an example of us trying to listen and try to move forward on that front. Uh, part of the challenge a lot of the time is that we're just behind. We are still developing the feature that we're getting feedback on. We haven't answered all the questions internally. Things like players aren't seeing the whole picture. That was certainly the case with Azerite Armor 
in terms of our internal discussions. Right? We knew that, and, and we, were, we heard the feedback, but frankly, some of our dismissing of the feedback was driven by the sentiment that like, well, they're only seeing like this small piece of it during level up, they're seeing the boring trades. And once that comes online, it'll, it'll be better. But we didn't get that online until so late in the beta that there wasn't time to really do another round of reaction duration. Yeah, so w sadly, he, he does sound like a politician. Um, sometimes I'd wish he'd be a little more, like, less, a little less diplomatic. Um, well, what's the real problem here? We're so behind. We're still developing the feature while we're putting it out. You know, <laughs> like, stop rushing it to market, please. It's it, it, And I don't blame Ian for this, really, either. It's almost like he's pleading, you know, with the Internet at large so that it'll, it'll bounce back to people that are trying to push the game out faster than it should be it's like let us finish it let us let us finish iterating and working on it before we're forced to show it to people absolutely not get it out there with essences in a2 we made the point of hey a2 ptr is going up pretty much day one all these essences are there in a vendor start messing with them here's how you're going to earn them Give us your feedback on that. Tell us what's exciting. Tell us what's boring. Tell us what feels crappy. And then that gave us time to actually iterate. And I think get the system to a place where when we when we formally released it, it was better received overall in a better place. Our goal with the Shadowlands Alpha Beta are just to get those systems stood up earlier. That's you know some of what we're seeing. The class changes that are there now covenant abilities that are, are online, the other ones that are going to come online shortly, and all those other things, because we know we're not going to get it right on the first time, the first try, and listening requires that we have enough time to actually act. And the only way we can do that is just getting out in front of this all. Okay. So that leads into, and I know Josh said... So yeah, here, here's the bigger question, because again, I, I point at that that feeling of we're not going to get it right the first time. We're going to put it out there and hope the community can help us get it across the finish line based on their feedback, right? Like, <sighs> really? <laughs> um, all right, so let me play devil's advocate for a minute. Um, are we just all too jaded now? Are we all too jaded about World of Warcraft to to be able to move this thing forward constructively? You know, like, are those that are disappointed and want to bitch, are we just going to bitch forever now about this game? For those of us that are optimistic, are we going to be super excited and then our interest is going to trail off after a month because that's just the nature of the beast? Like... Um, because <laughs> because here's what I, that's me playing devil's advocate right um we bitch because we care yeah because <sighs> <laughs> um, that's me playing devil's advocate because here's what i want to say here's what i want to say to ian and company right Where's your, where's the ambition? Where's the desire? Where's the talent? Where's the confidence? Where are the people that are really good at this job? Really good at making MMOs amazing. And and just doing it, right? Like why is it this process of experimentation? Well, let's try this and see if they like it. Well, crap, they didn't like it. Well, let's change it based on their feedback. Oh, they didn't like this. Let's throw it out entirely. We'll try something else. Well, we tried it, but it didn't work. You guys didn't like it. Like, I just don't feel any confidence. I don't feel any... Anybody just wants to grab this thing, right? And just be like, no, I'm going to do this thing. And it's going to be amazing. And... It's one of the greatest games of all time, and so they're going to put together a group that deserves to be in charge of this thing and can take it and make it the next greatest thing, right? Like, 
that's what I want to say. And it's a, it's a dream, right? It's a dream world scenario, <laughs> but it's just like, where's that? Where are those big brains? You know, like we did it once. Is, is that, was that it? Was it such a miracle? Was wow, vanilla wow and, and a few years after, was it such a miracle that it can't be recreated? You know, like, cause I don't believe that. I don't believe that the team that put it together, that was a once in a lifetime thing and they could never find anyone talented like that ever again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, that's what frustrates me, right? So. I don't want to hear any more of like, yeah, we're going to try this and we, we're not going to get it right, but eh, we'll get it close. Maybe the, maybe the community will help us get over the line. I don't know. Feeble <laughs> uh. Brox, thank you for the Twitch Prime three months. All right, I'm going to end the, uh, the video here. I'm going to chop it up a little bit, but, uh, I'll be right back with part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.